When Henry VIII died, his son Edward VI came to power, aged just nine. But he died only six years later, and after that it wasn't clear who would take the throne. Are you Protestant? Are you vaguely related to Henry VIII? Is your name Lady Jane Grey? Then you've won our star prize, and you're going to experience what it's like to be queen for nine days. Wow. That's nine whole days in charge of England. Here's what you'll get. Day one, we set you up in royal apartments at the Tower of London to await your coronation. Ooh, this is nice. I could get used to this. I don't think so. Day two, we throw in a crown for free. Go on, try it on for size. OK, what harm can it do? <laughs> You'll find that out on day nine. Sorry? Nothing. Day three, it's coronation time. Now you're the queen. You get to go out and meet your public. They don't even know who you are. We don't even know who she is. They were expecting a different person to be queen. We were expecting a different person to be queen. <laughs> they smell a wee. We smell it. Uh, see what you're trying to do there. Actually, we do. Day four, you have a letter sent to Henry VIII's daughter, Mary Tudor, asking her to recognize you as queen. Fingers crossed. Day five, you get Mary's reply. What does it say? Bog off. What? Well, that's the gist of it. Day six, relax and take in the luxurious surroundings, while Mary Tudor amasses an army to have you removed from power. What? Day seven, relax and take in the luxurious surroundings. Like I could be any less relaxed. Mum, our armies have been defeated in Cambridge by Mary Tudor. She says she's the Queen now and she's marching on London. OK, so now I'm less relaxed. Day eight, relax and take in the luxurious surroundings. Enough of this relaxing nonsense, OK? I'll have you know, I'm so stressed, my skin is peeling off. Oh, yuck, it's not very regal, is it? And day nine, relax and... Oh, all right, then panic as the people support Mary Tudor as their rightful queen and all your supporters desert you to save their own skins. Too late for yours, it's all peeled off anyway. Well, this can't get any worse. Yes, it can. And this fantastic offer ends in true Tudor style with a visit to the executioner. I never wanted to be queen in the first place. With queen for nine days, the shortest reign in history is yours, whether you want it or not. Warning, limited to nine days only. Offer expires in 1553. Welcome to the great storytellers' bake-off. Our bakers are all children's authors, so today's showstopper challenge is to create a feast for a birthday party. Hello. Now, who are you? Dahl, Roald Dahl. And I'm concocting nishnoblers and snozcumbers with a splendiferous fudge mallow delight, plus... Edible teacups. Sounds a bit basic, don't you think, Murray? We'll see. Yeah, we will. I'm Enid Blyton. I shall be making sardine sandwiches with ginger pop and lashings of boiled eggs. Every child's absolute favourite meal. And uh, what about a cake? Oh, they won't have time for cake. They'll be off having adventures and chasing smugglers. Oh, sounds a bit risky, don't you think, Murray? <laughs> Chasing smugglers? No, the sardines and boiled eggs. <laughs> Hope it's not a sleepover. <laughs> Gas mark 10. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and our third contestant is... Lewis Carroll. And I will be making a drink that makes you smaller and a cake that makes you bigger. Don't all cakes make you bigger? <laughs> well, you should know. <laughs> Hey, Mark's gonna say Your bake! Your mark's gonna say bake! It's time to see how our contestants have got on. First up, best-selling author, Roald Dahl. A spaghetti cake. That's <laughs> a... Bit, uh, wriggly. Yes, it's worm spaghetti. <laughs> it's raw in the middle. I rather like it. Oh, hello. And next we have Enid Blyton. The end. Ah, oh, Enid. I think I'll try one of your ooh, edible teacups. Oh. <laughs> oh, he was the one with the edible teacups. Scrumdiddly anxious. And lastly, author of Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll. 
Behold, the greatest party food ever created. Drink me. Okay. <gasps> oh, I'm shrinking, I'm shrinking. How will I ever get big again? Maybe I should have one of these biscuits. Yum, 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 yum. You haven't beat anything, have you? No, I haven't. Judging is the hardest part of the show. But I suppose this week's star baker is... Enid. Oh, Ron, it's a truly good effort, I say. And the holidays have only just begun. Here's to many more adventures in our secret tent. Is it possible for someone to be star baker and be sent home? Yes. Take it away, ladies. All the girls writing books knocking at your door. Know how to tell a story so that you want more. Was a time when only misters wrote the books, but now the sisters have started doing it for themselves. We were told cooking's all we could do, so we invented a magic of books that are flying off the shelves. The girls were always looked upon as being weaker. Don't say that to Hetty Feather or Tracy Beaker. Why do people so love stories? Cos we're able to the grave. These stories help us work out how we should behave. Ooh, we adore that magic. Hey! Girls and boys always kept the light on. Had to finish every Enid Blight on. 700 books in 50 years. Helped to grow the story habit. Even when told by a rabbit. Listen to my stories, you're all ears. Secret South, the famous five. Always called the cruel. Noughts and crosses was no game. At least not in my book. Why do people so love stories? You are one. Vincenzo Larfoff, and this week's scary story is the curse of Tutankhamun. It was 1922, a particularly ghoulish year, when an archaeologist named Howard Carter discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun, the ancient Egyptian pharaoh. As the dastardly digger crept inside the tomb, he found not only the king's great treasures, but there, in the burial chamber, trapped within a golden sarcophagus, the ancient pharaoh's mummy. And as we all know, nothing is more frightening than mummy. Go and tidy your room. And on the wall above the dead king's body was written, a curse, death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. <laughs> Yes, ooh, indeed. The curse was quick to bite. Within a year, the man who paid for the dig, Lord Carnarvon, dropped down dead. And as he did, all the lights in Cairo, the Egyptian capital, went out. At that exact same moment, back home in England, his dog howled in the moonlight. 
wrath of Tutankhamun had struck. But what would become of the man who first broke into the mummy's tomb? What fate would befall Howard Carter himself? He died years later of completely natural causes. <clears throat> it turned out that Lord Carnarvon died from an infected mosquito bite. The lights in Cairo went out because the electrics were dodgy and his dog howled, well, because that's just what dogs do, isn't it? it? It was nothing to do with the mummy. Oh, snap, just stop it. The curse was just made up by the newspapers. Why am I here? I mean, you know, if it's not a real ghost story, why get me? Get John Barrowman or Anton Deck. I'm off. And I'm keeping the jacket. Intuitive, revolutionary. Ancient Rome is delighted to announce the launch of the all-new A-Book, the take-anywhere reading solution. A-Book is amazing. Up until now, the only way to get your poetry to the masses was by writing it down on long, awkward scrolls. Or by shouting really loud! Now, A-Book has changed all that. With new A-Book, you simply turn the page using the unique turnable pages to reveal new information. And by writing data on both sides of the page, new A-Book holds more information in less space than anything that's gone before. What's more, the unique hardware and cover means your writing is safe from anything the Roman world might throw it in. Well, within reason. Incredibly clever, yet incredibly simple. A-Book is the new book that rewrites the book on writing books. And coming soon from the makers of A-Book, another book. Oh no. I just got used to using this one and now they're bringing another one out. Typical. <laughs> Funny. Greetings, horror hounds. I am Vincenzo Lal. And this week's scary story is from the Middle Ages. It's called The Children of Woolpit. It was 1173 an especially eerie year, when the small village of Woolpit in the county of Suffolk was invaded by creatures from another world. Indeed. One day, two aliens appeared in the village. These aliens had taken the form of two children, a boy and a girl, but their skin was bright green, and they spoke in a strange alien language. Or something. Yes! The villages of Woolpit were terrified. These green-skinned aliens demanded to be fed, but what they ate was truly chilling. Something no real human child would eat without being forced. Yes, vegetables! And then, quite without warning, the boy alien dropped down dead. And the girl alien? Well, that's the strangest part of all. She became a part-time domestic servant. Um, it turned out that these children were not from Mars or Venus. They were from Belgium. They were orphans, the children of Belgian cloth makers. Their skin was green because of the dye the parents used on the cloth. They'd been living in the woods so long, the only food they recognised was vegetation. The boy died of malnutrition, the girl grew up. Learned English, got married and went to work for a local knight. This is not a scary story, is it? It's a sort of boring story with a weird beginning. That isn't the same thing. I mean, why am I here? I grew a goatee for this. It's unbelievable. I'm going to my dressing room, and there had better be donuts. The past is no longer a mystery. Welcome to Horrible History.